Good morning or good afternoon, depending if you're on the East Coast or the West Coast. It is Friday, July 24th. And uh, oh my gosh, just the sheer amount of questions about America's Next Top Model, Cycle 14. And today I'm going to be joined by the winner of America's Next Top Model, Cycle 14, Krista White, who is amazing. I think she just joined. So let me just uh, connect her real quick. There she is. I don't know why I always check my hair. Y'all can see me anyway. I'm so crazy. <laughs> me and my hair, which is very kind of nuts. Hi, Krista. Hi, hi. Hey, I'm just going to adjust my little picture there. Okay. Look how gorgeous you look. Oh, she's got her now face right. on the you know, lip. I got that wedding to go to, so, you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Yes, you're going to a wedding. Yeah. Now, how are they going to do that social distance style? Like, just, is I, it outside? I no, it's outside, so I don't know how they're going to do it, but I'm my friend's witness, so I'm so excited because I've been there part of their whole journey, so I'm excited to see them come full circle and just kind of, you know. Oh, that's amazing. So I know. You got a fancy mask to wear? Nope. Oh, just a regular one? I'm just going to give you a regular mask. <laughs> I love it. She goes, I'm just going to give you a regular mask. Yeah, you know, a regular mask, a good beat face, and this outfit. Hello, I'm here. Well, <laughs> I got to tell you, people were so excited for this chat. The sheer number of questions. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, Lord. No. Uh -huh. I was going through them. There were just so many questions. And, you know, one of the things that I remember, I'm just going to give everyone a little behind the scenes oh, tea oh. on Krista, which is, um, I was talking to one of our producers. Truly, you were the contestant that people would fight over to interview because they were like, yeah, well, oh, I, told you. I want I Krista. Loved it. <laughs> I like interviewing when we would do that with the production was like my favorite part because you literally went down there and they kind of just let you freestyle. They'll ask you a question and you can say, you know, however you felt. And I, I like that because I'm pretty honest and blunt and straightforward and no sugar coating. And they they let me just do me. So yeah. I loved it. that was my favorite part. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. Well, we will dive into the questions. There are so many great questions for you. And I think, again, what I love is, you know, it, it, okay, I'll, I'll tell you guys this part, because this is something I've, I've never even told you this, Krista. So oh. I remember when in the beginning of the casting, because this casting was around the whole, you know, a fierce page kind of concept, kind of like a social media type okay, thing. I hated it. Okay, well, it was a little corny, but hey, by then the show was getting corny. Uh, I remember that, but I remember coming out and just seeing all the girls for the mm -hmm. first time. That you know, the first the first time we greet you, because Tyra Jay and I come out, and I remember seeing you there. And I I remember saying when I walked out, I was like, oh, I think I saw our winner because it was <laughs> like, you know, it was just a first impression. You were yeah. just so. You were tall, you were stately, you the way you held your body. I just remember thinking, oh, this girl, I, I think she I got it. Too much at this point, it was my time, okay? <laughs> How many times did you audition at this point? I auditioned since cycle one. Really? There was a girl on cycle one because they did the auditions in Little Rock, Arkansas. So I, uh -huh. I was born in Louisiana, but I grew up in Arkansas. So from yeah. kindergarten through college, I, grew up in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So that's home. My mom is still there. My yeah, dad yeah. Is still there. So um, yeah, so the first season, there was a girl on there from Little Rock. Do you remember? Um, with the K, Carissa Cat, something. I can't remember. There's two. Oh, it's Cat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but gotcha. This girl that was from Little Rock, Arkansas that was on there. So from there on out, like I tried out every year. I went to as many states as I could, Memphis, Mississippi, Little Rock, Texas, California. And, and we should I tell the fans, when you're going to these open calls, there is no Tyra, there is no me, nope. Miss J. It's a casting nope. director. And not sometimes not even the head casting director. Nope. Like Michelle Mock wasn't at a lot of them. I think I probably saw her maybe three or four times, and that's not a lot. And, 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 for, so and, for, and for people who don't know, Michelle Mock, who is not related to our executive producer, Ken Mock, just, just by Quincy's <laughs> last name, spelled differently, but she was the head casting director and she would be in charge of, you know, finding the girls to kind of narrow it down. And I know there's a question that's coming up and I'll get to it where someone asks, you know, does Tyra look at all the tapes? Well, we'll get to that question. She, yeah. she actually doesn't. You have to imagine... We're talking tens of thousands of girls. It has to be whittled down yeah. to, 
usually a group of, I remember the first time Tyra was going through, it was overwhelmed. She was at my apartment. We were looking at tapes. Like we literally, it gets whittled down to something like a hundred and something tapes. You know, she can't really go through thousands and thousands. So, um, but yeah, that's that process. But let's dive into these questions because we've got so many for you. Great questions about casting and everything. But before we jump into it, um, and I already answered this in my feed, but I do want to call out that the user uh, Pretty Bee Buzz wrote me a message, um, mm -hmm. and she she first started off with, "This is a hard unfollow," and she said that I had adjusted both my Facebook post and my Instagram post mm -hmm. from the copy that was originally posted to right. the way I kind of put it um, right. yesterday, and and I answered her nicely and honestly because. My intent always around kind of even mentioning Anjali, because I know you all became friends, even though on the show it was edited, like you were starting to disagree. Yeah. I have nothing but so much love and respect for Anjali. And she, you know, this was a girl who told us she slept in the Port Authority, you yeah. know, bus or terminal to, to yes. audition to be a part of this show. And Anjali yeah. with those gorgeous cheekbones and the determination I live for her. And I think even the way the show is edited, people could tell I was like mad cool with Anjali. And even, and I'm, we're not talking about All-Stars today, but even when we get to All-Stars, you can kind of tell the little wink and the nod. Yeah. Her and I had our conversation and I just want to say, I have nothing but love for her and her journey. And I loved working with her on the show because she really took cr constructive criticism well. Mm -hmm. and applied it and I remember that photo shoot we did in the um it was the middle of the night in the New York City subway and it was the, the cover girl thing and she slayed, she slayed that you. shoot Hello. slayed it I Listen. remember it was like 3 a.m it was 3 a.m I, I totally agree with you because I didn't when I read it I didn't take it in a bad way because when we when I say when I speak of complete story because uh she to me, she's still a friend. I love that girl like a sister. We we have each other's phone numbers. Like before I was gonna sit down and do the Jay's tag chat, I called her because our stories are intertwined. Mm -hmm. We like I I'm ride or die for her. Like I know what that girl have have gone through. And for me, um, I felt like she was handled unfairly. And I will always speak up for that. I will always speak up for her because I she 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 was dedicated to this. She, she was very she, this. Yes, and she and she this. became such a fan favorite. So I, I appreciate, I did answer Pretty Bee Buzz. She wrote me right back. She said, thank right. you for clarifying. And she said, right. this is a hard refollow. Yeah. So Pretty Bee Buzz and I are cool. Right. Um, now that she understands and, and I have to take responsibility, maybe the way my post was written was a little confusing. Yeah. Well, let's dive into these but questions. But I think so too, like the fans, like they, you guys gotta be, come on, they like, they make it worse and it's like it's not even that and you don't even get a time to process or like to think mm. like no like no one would ever like speak on me like that even not even me like she would uh, to me she it should have been a response is like chris has never i've never spoken bad about her never yeah. will, never nothing we walked through the fire together <laughs> and I, by the way i love i mean a lot of people are kind of agreeing and listening to what i'm saying someone said why are you lying jay I'm not lying, but no. you're allowed to have, but wait, you're allowed to have your opinion. Cause I know Krista, you and I talked earlier this week and we were talking about all the fun memories we had. So yeah. guys, let's dive into your questions. Um, so first one is from Corbin Jackson, which is says Krista is one of my favorite ANTM contestants of all time. Awesome. And that absolutely gorgeous complexion and bone structure, she literally slayed the competition. So I just wanted to show you, you had so much love and shout outs. So I just wanted okay. to throw that out there. Thank that you. was from Corbin Jackson. But now here's a great question. And I'd love to know your thoughts, uh, Chris, on this. So Olivia Tamak said, how does it feel when the girls come into casting screaming? You know, I think, I think it's a surreal moment for many of the girls. I mean, the show by then was a, was a global phenomenon. And, um, you know, I think it's really kind of cool to kind yeah. of, I think for them to walk into that moment, what does it feel like for you for the first time you're walking there, you're amped up, you were flown in, what's going on? Yeah, it, it was, it's, it definitely feels surreal, like for me to audition for that long and be like, finally, I'm here. So I know what I came to do. I, I'm mm -hmm. I to do this. But my second, like my second reservation about it, like first I was excited. I was like, yeah. And then my second res reservation was like, oh my God, there's like so many 
there's so many girls because during that casting week, there's like what 50 girls that they try to cram down to 13 in a week's time, which is, mm -hmm. you know, so that, and then it's like different personalities. So it was like, I think like a lot of people I see like asking about like Alasia. So like in casting thing, like she was just like Alasia's beautiful skin complexion, hair, like that girl was gorgeous, but she was crazy and a fun way. She had so much energy, but you got to think she was 18. She was young. She was fresh. She was excited. Like, you know, like, you know, for me, and I was just like, oh, I've never seen someone like this, this like, just but was, was, was that much gusto you know yeah, a lot of people are writing a lot of gusto and I, I had never seen I was like oh it's too much for me but you know that was just her personality that's who she was and you saw over time I feel like people kind of you know she was like rambunctious and, and like gusto and yeah. she loud and spoke her mind and like but in a very young and fresh way and it was just we were like so ah, like a lot of people a lot of people are writing down below. I'm trying to get to all the questions. I just want to call them out. A lot of people have actually said, not only in feed, but down below, they're like, and Krista slayed the runway in cycle 15, which is when you were a winner and you came back and oh, it was Roberto Cavalli in Milan. Cavalli, yes. Yeah. So I remember that because I remember saying to you, girl, hit it. And I remember you hitting it. You did. But the, you was like, now when you girl, got it, pump it. Was and I knew you were going to kill that runway with the sliding door. But anyway, yes. we're talking about cycle 14 and people are mentioning down below and it's our next question. This is from once underscore upon underscore a uh, underscore Sophie. It says, Krista, as the only contestant to ever get your makeover, she goes that she can remember anyway, do you feel like it was a lazy choice for the producers? You worked it because you're stunning, but come on, a ponytail. Listen. I know it was the most whack makeover. Oh, I was bad. like, "Y'all giving you her remember, a photo." Do you remember? I had a whole meltdown in the bathroom, and totally. you, were you there? I was mic'd up, so I, I wasn't in the bathroom. But I remember, even when we revealed it to you, you were like, "Jay, like this is what I do I when I like, when I'm just trying to run to the grocery this store." We, girl, this is what we do, and we don't feel like combing our hair. Did you just? You ain't even gonna give me nothing to work with. And I was like, ready. I'm like, okay, they gonna shave me bald, throw me a wig on. Like, I was like, what? And you could have worked anything. You could, I think you would have been that contestant, whether your head was shaved bald, weave, Got whatever. Me like, yeah, give me something. <laughs> I know. I remember thinking, I because we, I had no, I had no say in those makeovers. I remember that. I was like, oh my God. This is, I knew when you even said it to, I remember you looking at Jay and I like, I girl, this is what I do going to the like, grocery store. <laughs> when you turn around, it's like, so you're going to get a nice pullback. You was trying to make it good though. You was like, it's going to be nice and slicked up and just trying to do my job. And I'm still looking at you like, it's a no for me. <laughs> I had to do my job, you know, you got to do what you's told. Um, late, <laughs> the next question is from lady underscore hex noir. Can you explain Brenda's hair? Because that was a mess both times. It no, made her look. It wasn't. Well, let me okay, finish. Sorry. Let me let me finish. I'm gonna read her whole question. She goes, because that was a mess both times. It made her look really old. What did you think? I, See, I think so. I, I love Brenda's makeover. She was mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Like the first one, I ain't really when they first did, I was like, all right, it's a little choppy. It's not. I see where you was going with it, but it ain't there yet. But then when they uh, had the lady come to the, the house and fix it. It was, she looked stunning. Her face, her structure, her pout, like, I, I she was beautiful to me. I, like, I saw her I think, in the top I, five. I, I no see what people told me she wasn't going to be there. I see what people are saying when they say they thought she looked much older. I totally get it. We worked with it on the shoots. I do think it gave her, like, an edge. Mm -hmm. um, someone had actually suggested, why didn't they just like ice her out platinum or do something like that? But ultimately the decision was the made. I her skin tone. Though. I love the red too, yeah. I'm a um, fan of her, so. <laughs> so here's a good question. And I think you can speak to this because you really lived this. And again, I can say this very honestly. You know, we heard towards the end there was more of an issue, but I did not know what was going on in the house. We never know what's going on in the house. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but so let me read this question. This is unsigned underscore hype. This is a question for you, Krista. Can you guys explain the blatant racism that Jessica and Brenda were displaying towards Alasia, Angelie, and Krista? It seems like that was kind of swept under the rug during the cycle. I, I disagree. I think it was very much portrayed on the show, but what what was going on? Why was it? Did you feel it was racism or just people not 
liking each other? What was going on there? I think it wasn't for us. We didn't, I didn't, at least I can't speak for Alasia or Angelique. They will have to speak on that. But for mm -hmm. myself, I didn't take it as racism. I took it as they wanted, there was this thing like, you know, um, from a previous cycle, like we saw Angelique on cycle 12. And once she got rowdy and, and into a situation, like she was quickly eliminated. And when she came back this, the cycle 14, she was very quiet, very like- She was very quiet was so and quiet. lovely, I yeah. Mean, casting table and from the casting table on through that was my girl is my mm -hmm. girl like all the way through so for me I didn't see it as that but I, I thought like they would do little stuff to try to get us to get angry because you know once we're angry it's the whole you know you get a you know get a black girl oh, angry it's a so whole you think you think they were playing they were playing on this whole kind of idea of this angry black woman trope which yes. gets often yeah. kind get, of re perpetuated angry, yes reacting guess what you're that's that's grounds for elimination. But I think also too, um, a lot of the stuff too, like, you know, producers are like from casting, like we, they would have conversations and like, you have to be interesting. Like, yes, it's a modeling competition, but it is a reality show too. Mm -hmm. So I think for people and it's like, you have to find what that balance is for you, you know, sure. how to be interesting and how to portray, you know, portray your personality, be honest, be truthful, you know, be good for TV, but still produce good photos. Cause that's hard on little sleep. Yeah, I think it's, I think it is difficult. I think a lot of people, I'm reading your comments down below, they're saying, well, you know, they're talking about, you know, uh, is Angelie wasn't black, you know, you and Alasia were obviously black, but I think ultimately the question here becomes, it, it's, it, you know, uh, you know, people are kind of playing on this idea of what minorities in general yeah. um, uh, end up kind of really, uh, you know, the, again, these ideas of these tropes, et cetera, which is a form of racism. It's not kind of more blatant, blatant racism. Again, I cannot speak for any of those women. I never, I didn't even know that was going on in the house like that. I'm so, I'm glad, I'm glad that you didn't kind of feel it as such. I know there are a lot of people watching who felt that way. Uh, and I'm sorry, you know, this, these are the conversations we are having today right. now in 2020 right. though, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. More so, so now so, but like then at that time, no, it didn't feel like that. It wasn't, it wasn't that. And a lot of the issues that was between, of course, me, Angelina, and Alasia, like will link up because it's three of us. So yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we, we do have stuff in common, you know, but you know, not only that, but when stuff like that happens, we, you know, we do yeah. talk to each other. You don't feel that. But there was a lot of stuff when the cameras went down that you guys didn't see that wasn't filmed and we would have issues and we were the ones that would come back and speak up on camera and be like, nah, I wasn't with that. That's, that's not what Yeah, was. yeah. Like, what? What are you, what are they talking about now? Yeah, because that's, like, that's a game people don't realize can happen because <laughs> you guys are not supposed to talk. You're called on ice when you're not yes. mic'd. But at night, you are de mic'd. You have to go to sleep, and then that's yes. when these little microaggressions these little can come up. Was happening, and it was like you can't film it because there's no there's no audio. Yeah. So there's there's lots of questions to dig into. To even even within there, there's more coming up there. Uh, one question which is interesting, and I want to know how you feel about this, Krista. So uh, it's Olivia Dot asked, why was Ren hand picked? Was this for the TV portion of the show, or did you guys uh, not like any of the other girls? you know, that auditioned. First of all, it was complete news to me. Uh, it was like a surprise for me. I, and just as much as it was for you guys, how did you girls feel with that? Did you feel like it was unfair? What did you think it about that? It was unfair. That? We were offended. Like, <laughs> oh, really? I'm offended. How dare you? Like, and she just showed up and it's like, uh, she wasn't even in the gym shooting with us. Like, where, where'd she come mm -hmm. from? Yeah, and, I know. And picked her and I was like, it was kind of like okay. that little that little twist just yeah. to kind of but help. I think it helped it helped kind of set the competition in a weird way because yeah. now because everyone was on toes to like yeah mm -hmm. yeah we yeah. really had no clue it was like anything can change at any point in time but even with her coming in Ren was cool she was so cool she had a super like I loved her look and her vibe was kind of fun it was kind of yeah. hilarious because we had to shave her armpits during makeover I remember that she never because she didn't believe in that. She was vegan before, you know, vegan. Vegan is really big now, but a lot yeah. of them are vegan. Even more so now, but she was yeah. vegan. I remember she cooked this, like, meatless chili, and it was, like, so good. Oh, really? Oh, so she was like so that. Oh, I, no she, seemed, she was super cool on the shoots. I liked working so with her. Cool. 
Speaking of changes, m.mc underscore 1991 asked, this is Andre Leontelli's first season. How did Tyra, the producers, convince him to be part of the show? And why was Vogue Italia not, or American Vogue not part of the winning prize? Because uh, um, uh, Italian Vogue became a part of it next season. Sure, um, yeah. I do believe, you know, Tyra was at this point where she really felt like, you know, I think people saw the show, It first of all, the show really grew. It became a huge global sensation. Yeah. And then I think with the short cycle, cycle 13, there were some moments yeah. that caused the show to kind of jump the shark, you know, like super smize and some things. And people were like, this isn't a, a model competition show anymore. This isn't serious. Yeah. And Tyra wanted to re-up and bring back that a very initial intention she had for the show, which was really looking for the next kind of top model. Yeah. And so bringing Andre in, I don't know how she, I know she had lunch with him several times. She actually did go meet with Anna Wintour to even kind of get her blessing. I think yeah. I remember her saying that that wasn't, you know, wasn't the most comfortable lunch, but, uh, or meeting, but um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it was great. I love Andre, I've known him for years. He was a lot of fun. I mean, for us behind the scenes, like I would sit in Andre's room, we would like Kiki <laughs> sitting on the end of his bed, She's got stories. I say she because that's how we talk yeah. about. I'm like he's really got stories, like yeah. just for days, and he's just really a lot, a lot of fun. So he was fun. even when he roasted us during like our pictures and stuff, and he would give us like these names, <laughs> he'd laugh. Like, yeah, he would laugh, and they'd be like, "Okay, yeah. you laugh. You got to be serious." And it was like because he was just saying stuff, or like when Alasia the the naked something pit challenge, and she was like. Yes. Uh, he was like, I will hang this in my salon. My salon. <laughs> my I salon. will hang it in my salon. And Tara's like, what? Your salon? <laughs> yeah. He Andre was a lot stuff, of fun. And it was great. It was great. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually remember, like, he would crack up the whole judging room and you girls. Yes, they would cut a lot of it out. <laughs> they would... <laughs> It was just, a, yeah, Drekitude. They're writing down below. Drekitude. The Drekitude. Yes, like, Drekitude. Oh, I remember Drekitude. Tara saying, what's Drekitude? She's like, Drek is wreck. Drekitude. It's he's just so, he's so much fun. Um, and then people, the next question she asked, following up to that, why, what, what, you know, why, or actually this is more, M-O-R-G underscore Yon said, why was Miss J demoted from being a judge? Did they think they would be competing personalities between Miss J and Andre? Well, Miss J and Andre, well, there were two judgings during that last episode. I was in one judging and Miss J was in the last judging. I don't think they were competing personalities. I think Tyra just really wanted to refresh the whole yeah. show in a way. And, um, you know, Andre bringing in that authority, right. uh, I, I, you know, I'll let Ms. J talk about it. I can't speak for him. I know right. he wasn't. Yeah. It was a shock to kind of hear that things were going to shift like that, like anyone would feel yeah. a type of way, but we'll let him answer that himself. Um, so the next question, there's several for you here, Krista. Um, oh, well, this is from Sarnas underscore 95. Uh, several questions. The, uh, where did the producers find Ren? I don't think, I don't even know the answer to that. I don't know. I saw her when everybody <laughs> else saw her. <laughs> but, and she also asked about Brenda's makeover, which we talked about, but she also asked, did production get mad at Alexandra for the rip dress on the pendulum runway? And, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, then there, there's more to her question. So there's that. And her other part of the question is, what was your favorite photo shoot from this cycle and why? And her favorite photo shoot was the dance genre. So answer the pendulum runway and which was your favorite photo shoot? Okay, so here's T on the pendulum runway. And yes. I don't know if she was there for that. Sometimes <laughs> they get these ideas and they don't test them out first. They just be like, yeah, we can do that. Let's do it. And I don't think they really tested this out. And I think someone actually spoke on it after the fact. But like the pendulums, they wasn't supposed to be that heavy. A lot of us actually got knocked off the thing. You only saw uh, Alexandria get knocked mm -hmm, off. That's the mm -hmm. only person you saw, but I got knocked off. I got bumped and it almost knocked the wind off of you. So those little <laughs> things were swinging and they was knocking us out like sweet peas. We was just <laughs> like, like sweet peas. peas. I love that. We were all over. It was hilarious, but she was the only one that actually got hurt like that was bleeding. So no, and it was uh, uh, Rachel Roy dresses at the time. She wasn't upset yeah. because you know, it was nothing what can you was do? in our control. There was nothing she could yeah. have done to yeah. to stop it except not walk through there. But then you, you want to win the challenge. You want to give it your effort. But who those pendulums was, they were but to be But to be fair, <laughs> though, in high fashion runway shows, and I've seen many, been to many, they do all this crazy kind of art form. Like, I just remember, yeah. uh, 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 I mean, I mean, 
oh my gosh, there are just so, so many kind of concepts out there. Um, like Shalom Harlow, I remember opening one of the Alexander McQueen shows, uh, spinning on a, a platform in a white dress with robots spray painting the dress yes. to create art. Like this is the stuff girls have to do it. So walking between the pendulums is something that would absolutely happen for sure. Yeah. Uh, and and someone just commented there, down, <laughs> and someone commented down there, oh, she fell twice because she first fell coming down the stairs. If yeah. you remember, remember she came down the stairs and went down and she got yeah. up and then she kept going. But listen, that we can count her one staircase, but the pendulum, we literally all got knocked. Like you just didn't see it. It was edited to look how, you know, on showroom floor, we're not in control. The of power the pendulum, of the edit. That's exactly. what we're learning through well, these we, Jay's chats. We all got shook with those pendulums. Okay. Shook we're it. not even, we were shook it. All of us. Shook it. Oh gosh. <laughs> so, um, uh, Ibadmas88 has this question. In episode nine, how the hell did Alasia get sent home over Jessica? Week after week, Andre Leon Talley says how boring and basically not good Jessica is. Alasia's passion was unmatched. Yeah. What was your feeling around that? Did you feel like some of these eliminations were unfair? Were you guys surprised? How did you feel? Do you remember uh, that episode specifically? I remember that episode, but I don't think... I, I felt like some people's eliminations were unfair. I definitely felt like that. But um, I don't think Alasia's was ever for her pictures because she was beautiful. She photographed. Like, you remember her cover stunning. girl shot in the Ooh, subway? Stunning. But she's stunning With that girl. beautiful hair and they curled yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that girl, her skin, like her tone. She didn't even need makeup or nothing. Like, she was just yeah, her, stunning. But I think her... Um, what the judges pointed out was like her personality shift and it did because when we met her she was woo you know mm -hmm. loud and in your face and you know and then by I, that time she had kind of like simmered I, really yeah I remember her. what was difficult for me one shoot is I remember we started a shoot and she just you know it's just like she just kind of kept it really low and I was like where's Elasia by the way they're calling oh, me yes. out down below they're she's saying, here. She's in here. Yeah. Oh, she, oh, she is. No. Oh, I didn't know. Hey, Alasia girl. We didn't know you were here. But people are calling me out saying um, that uh, Krista didn't answer her favorite photo shoot. So, what was oh. your favorite photo shoot that season? Okay. We'll I'm come curious back to, to that because I definitely yeah. want to that. But uh, my favorite favorite photo shoot, um, I have two. So go ahead, my, tell us. My first one is like when I was like, all right, I'm about to flip the script. I think I got this thing figured out. And this is what I'm about to do was definitely the hair photo shoot. And I was like, I'm coming in. This oh, the hair. Were you wearing and I all like, hair? I'm just about to go in and do some stuff. And, you know, and I was like, oh, that's when I think I kind of let loose, you know. Uh, and I was like. When you girls were all wearing like outfits made out of hair. Yes, just for yes. those who haven't watched. But yeah, Absolutely. outfits made out of hair. Yeah. Gotcha. So that one was my favorite. And I liked the, um, I mean, only because it was funny. The um, the one in New Zealand with the dress, and uh, they kept saying, you look like a, Andre, it's like, you like a tornado or something. But that was only my favorite because it was super fun. When you say the dress, you mean the one where you guys all wore the same dress? That we Nigel all wore shot? the same dress, the mm -hmm. black dress, and he was like, you yeah. look like a tornado, but little do they know, I slipped off that rock, scarred my little wrist and my knee, the uh. sheep feet on my feet, like... It was I remember the sheep. So oh my god! That photo came from there. <laughs> yes, yes, I know it's crazy. Um, so here, uh, so uh, Mo underscore Peak says, when doing the fashion shows for the show, how do people attend them? Were there tickets that the public would buy to attend, or how do they find out about these shows? Also, does the audience have to sign a non-disclosure agreement? So um, there are many ways we actually let the audiences find out about the show. Um, and we usually get like a large, like a large attendance, but no one has to buy tickets for it. Um, oh, it's but free. There are, it's free, but there are huge signs everywhere. You are being filmed for broadcast, blah, 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 blah. Even when oh. you enter, you have to enter a very narrow area with signs yeah. on either side. Uh, that we also check cell phones. That's what people don't know. We have to check that. cell phones or tell people not to bring them. Uh, it's a huge undertaking because I run the runway shows and, and have to produce the whole thing. It's a lot of work and we get everyone in so they know that they're being recorded for TV when they come in. Otherwise, we have to blur their faces. So that's why there's signs everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and um, we'll t there are more runway questions. We'll get to them because uh, they're coming up because it was that big Anna Sui show, but we'll, we'll yeah. get to that. 
I'm sorry, these questions are a little Wait, out of order. Wait, let me bounce back to Asia's real quick because I don't want to. Oh, sure. It. Go ahead. So I feel like a lot of our energy, it wasn't just her, but a mm. lot of our energy changed because you got to think, we're coming in there. You got people ranging from 18 to 25. We're mm -hmm. running on no sleep. We're filming all day from the time. Seven days a week. Or you got to get mic'd up so you can't even open your mouth to talk until you get mic'd up. There's bathrooms with no doors on the walls. There's cameras all around. Plus, there's people with cameras. Like, if two people are in the bathroom, they can come in there and film. So if somebody was showering and somebody was changing the tampon, they're like, just in case you say something, okay? We're going to be here. So it was so, like... And let's explain that rule to people. So the bathroom rule is, if one person's in the bathroom, a camera operator cannot enter. Cannot but enter. if two just people are in the bathroom, welcome. Camera, welcome. Hello. They're allowed in. Uh -huh. We in there. Yeah. Just in case you start talking, they was. In I there, could never so. do that. Oof! I could never do that. I don't know how y'all do it, really. But I, that's I some know, commitment. It, I can understand. So you got to think eighteen, and it's like your first time away from your family. She was, I think, fresh. I don't even know at that time if she was done with high school. I think she was still doing her schoolwork in her house. So yeah. kudos to her. And oh, uh, Bianca's watching. Bianca. Bianca's watching from another season. She's like invasion. Oh, hey. She's like in the in. Pri the, the privacy, the privacy in, listen, was just non-existent. With the door <laughs> that we would go number two in, and then we stopped that toilet up, and we couldn't go in there no more. Woo! Tragic, tragic, tragic. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so we have tons of questions. I don't know how we're gonna get through all these. So this is twelve underscore more underscore keys. Um, he says first, thanks for doing these J chats, and the questions for you, Krista. Did you get a lot of flack for your Southern drawl like Danny did in cycle six, being that you're both from Little Rock? And as a fellow Southerner, um, and he's from Alabama, I know it can be sometimes hard to turn it on and off. How did you feel about that? Did you feel like you got flack from him? You know, I, I didn't actually, and I don't know if it was, it, and I don't know if it was in the show, but I remember Tyra asking me, she was like, uh, and let me clarify, me and Danielle, we're from 40, we're like 45 to 30 minutes away from each other. She was from Little Rock, I was from Pine Bluff. So okay. she's from the city, like a city in Arkansas. I was definitely the country, and mm -hmm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm raised in the country. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but we were we were raised like 30, 45 minutes apart. And Tyra kept saying, "Why why don't you speak like she she does? Why is your dialect different?" I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think there was nothing wrong with my dialect. That's like in the it's like in the UK. In the UK, you could live <laughs> 20 minutes apart right. and have a very different. Right. I, mean, I don't right. even I because I can't hear the differences, but I have a lot of friends in the UK and they're like, right. oh no, that's totally different. You can tell that's right. from that side of town. And that's a, like woo. And it's like you know. I didn't know until we come yeah. out. Like you don't know until you come out of there and people are like, Well, you talk different. It's like, well, I always thought I sounded normal, but maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they're saying, Hey from Liverpool, they're all waving. Hey, and, but, and and people are saying that uh, you were killing it in New Zealand and we'll get to New Zealand yeah. New Zealand in a second. Um, Alyssa Flower Twig has this question for you. Krista, at the beginning of the cycle, you were portrayed as the girly girl not owning any sneakers, very put together at the time, uh, and even disliking your slick back makeover at first. Is it more of, per, uh, is it more, is this more of persona, I guess this is a typo here, of the show that gave you, or is it really the truth? And if so, how did you learn to rock your makeover despite the original disaster? And did you ever learn from your experiences on Top Model Outside Modeling? And P.S., do you own a pair of sneakers now? Sorry, it was really long. Listen, I own a ton of sneakers. I became a sneaker person <laughs> last year. Oh, cool. Oh, last year, 2019? Last year, actually. I have a ton. Of, I just became a sneaker person last year, no lie. Um, but I still am a, a very much a heel girl, always. I always will be. But I think that came from how I grew up. So um, I was born in 84. So if y'all don't know, I'm in my 30s for sure. And I love it, honey. I look good. Yeah, but okay. I was born in 84, so I grew up in the 90s. And yeah. I hit my growth spurt. So I'm five nine and a half. So I hit my growth spurt in sixth grade. So while everybody else was to my hip, I'm like towering them, can rest my hand on their head like crazy. So yeah. back then they didn't make pants for girls in long because I was skinny. So I wore like a double zero, but my legs were super long. So I had to wear boy clothes probably until I got to high school and then I was able to buy girl clothes. So and then, then, and then you were like, I'm wearing heels. Or yeah. to, like dive into the girl thing because I wore boy clothes for so long just so, you know, I didn't flood. I and mean, then, you know, flooding was like frowned upon in the 90s, but now it's a thing. Like, where are your crop jeans? Of course, crop jeans. Yeah, all that. And, I, and I'm born in 72. So I've seen these trends come around twice. Um, <laughs> 
But, you know, it's interesting. One of the things, and, and I'm going to this next question, but we were talking about favorite photo shoots. Just creatively, one of the shoots that I loved, and I remember you slaying, and I want to clarify, because I don't know if you know how the judgings work. So the, when we were in Queenstown, and you remember we yeah. flew there, and you guys, we did the yeah. runway challenge or yeah. whatever on the plane. Then we get there, and then we did the pretty ugly shoot, and that's when I announced that half of you will be going home because there were four of you. I didn't so like two that of, one. I didn't, no, but you didn't like that shoot. But here's the thing, creatively, and I'm going to tell you something that Andre told me. So here's okay. a little tea. Creatively, um, the creative was so vogue. It was so vogue. And okay. your shot, I remember you were just all broken down and bent and curled into the tree. Um, and I know it was really kind of, it, it, you know, crazy looking hair, makeup and wardrobe, but it was very Vogue magazine. And Andre lived for your photo. And actually, if you watch the editing and the judging, the problem was, I'm gonna tell you this is a little bit of tea. Um, basically, the, the, the tea runneth over. What <laughs> happened was everybody loved your photo. Everyone okay. loved your photo. So we all gave positive comments. Andre went on and on and on and on. How about amazing it was and da, 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 da. I lived it. I was at the photo shoot. I loved it. And then we were like, okay, I remember Tyra looking over and the producers are like, okay, we're, we need some kind of negative. It can't be all positive. <laughs> so it wasn't like, so they all look at me because I'm at the shoot. So yeah. I remember saying, well, the thing that we struggle with with Krista is, you know, sometimes she gives us everything in the body, but we struggle it. with the eyes, which mm -hmm. I guess is a fair comment because yeah. at the time you would just kind of pose because you're so stunning. Yeah. And we wanted that extra push through, you know what I mean? So yeah. I had to give the quote unquote negative. I don't even think it was really a negative. It was an observation, but yeah, um, yeah they all look at me. So I always look like the one pumping out the negative comments. You know but. what? I've always felt like that too. Like I'm never good with the eyes only because let me just give you some. Cause tea. you give us cheekbones and face. Full Let face. me give you some tea. Okay, so <laughs> what y'all don't know, you know, I mean, maybe you have, because you can see it on the show. I didn't wear makeup all the time, but I have a birthmark over this eye. Mm -hmm. So this eye is typically, it's a little, it's more, it's more closed than this one. So I always, if I squint too much, it looks like this one is definitely this one's really shut, small. You yeah. know, yeah, I'm giving the whole, you know, if you guys used to watch In Living Color or something back in the day, they used to, you know, Jamie Foxx used to do this whole Sammy Davis Jr. thing. And we call it like from the, in the South, we like got the whole shaboing, boing going on. That's like when one eye is a little smaller than the other, you know, <laughs> Sammy Davis. So it's like, you gotta watch it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, people are talking about the go sees, and I, I, I want to continue with the questions, but talk about the go sees and the drama around the go sees a little, and the timing. How does that work? Explain to the people how it works, because the camera operators that are following you are not allowed to say anything, help yep. you, talk to Nothing. you at all, right? Mm -hmm. Tell the fans. But listen, what it's like. they don't give you. Of course, you don't get no heads up or nothing. So we literally left New York, flew into LAX. We were stuck at LAX for like 14 hours. So we just laid around on the floor for 14 hours, left mm -hmm. there, got on our flight from uh, Air New Zealand, flew into New Zealand. They drive us up to the, the volcano and, you know, we get the welcoming dance and everything. Yeah. And it, 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 like, was like, that was an 18 hour flight. And they were like, it was yeah, very so long. you guys are going on your go seats today. We were like, what? We didn't even get to think twice. I don't even think we barely. But you know that, but that does kind of happen. What? It does kind of happen with models, though. They often get off the plane and have to go yes, meet with clients. Like in your mind, you're thinking like, they ain't going to do this to us. Yes, they did. And we all kind of looked a, a hot mess. So they gave us that little bag of makeup and was like, fix yourself. I was like, we need a towel, a bath, a try again. <laughs> and you want to know but, the real thing that happens with us, because when I finished my last day when we were yeah. shooting in New York, I actually get to go. I get a whole day off when I arrive. Isn't that kind of fucked Bless up? You. Like, we actually like <laughs> Bless I actually you. usually took, I did meetings because I had to produce the runway show. I had to look, but I don't, I'm not on camera, obviously. So, but I remember I, that flight is a brutal flight flying to New Zealand for sure. From New York. It's a long way. Yes. And like, we were hungry, but I remember like, we were all struggling with it. Angelique did it with so much ease and she actually won it. She killed that thing. We were all struggling. She got six out of six, right? Wasn't yes. that? Yeah. We, mm -hmm. Everybody else was like, I don't even know how she like she pulled that thing. Cause out. she was there to win it. Win, yes. Like Angelie yes. was not she playing. Was everybody, we was all like, yeah, I'm gonna hit about three or four, and this I think that's good for me. Like I ain't even 
she was like all of them got it snatched it done no question she killed yeah, that child she killed it i know so here's author v cole says can we discuss well we kind of talked about this can we discuss how catty and nasty the cycle was in general um and also she's uh, he's saying Angelie is my favorite contestant of all time. And what are your fond fondest memories of her, uh, the cycle, Krista, Mr. J? I think I already said mine, but I'll reiterate it was, I remember this, the photo shoot in the New York City subway, which yeah. we had to permit that with the, the MTA. And we could, um, there, people don't know there's a shuttle train that runs between 42nd Street and um, Grand Central Station. Yeah. So that shuttle shuts down in the middle of the night because the yeah. rest of the subways run all night. So we shot there because it was the only thing that was shut down. Late at and night. we had to start at like, we the, the photo shoot started at like, wasn't it 12.30 a.m. Yes. or something? Late. And we <laughs> shot to like five in the morning. And I got to tell you, my fondest memory was working with Anjali because she was, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a cover girl. I'm going to be all positive and light. And my fondest memory of her the entire cycle was that overnight photo shoot. She made it so pleasant for me. That was what I remember. But um, and what I couldn't pick out like one thing. I don't know. Like she is so like, I think like I didn't like how she was edited sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't with her on cycle 12, but I was with her all of 14. And so um, like, I feel like people provoked her a little bit just to get the angry side of out of her because uh, the the talk in the house was they were definitely she was uh, you know one to beat because not only was she beautiful she produced good pictures but because she had been on a cycle before and apparently in casting yeah yes mm -hmm. it happened to Jasleen she was on a cycle before came back and won the thing won it she was on the cycle before came back gonna win the thing so yeah. it was all like we got to get her out so they were like trying to little do stuff but. Angelina. And I think that that answers his question too. I feel like the girls in general were provoking her yeah. because they didn't her want her to win. They didn't want her to have get eliminated for going yeah. off or you know fighting or something. But my fun, everything she is hilarious. Like when we <laughs> went back after we filmed the, uh, the episode, we're going to New Zealand, and they're like, "Christy, you won, Ben. Who are you gonna take?" And I'm like, "My girl, Angelie." And we're like, "Woo!" And we go back to the house and they're like, okay, well, you got to pack your bags. Blah, blah, blah. So we packing our stuff. This girl was packing stuff that came in the house. She's like, I'm going to take this little egg. Oh, and this <laughs> pillow. I'm going to have some keepsakes. We were like Ooh. dying. Like she just is like a funny character, especially like late at night. Yeah. She's like a late night. She's a late night owl. Like I would be like, I'm going to sleep. I, I, I got I yeah. four hours at least. And she would like stay up and laugh or in New Zealand, like let's have drinks in the jacuzzi and, crack up like she's like literally light fun airy like that's her more than it's not you know yeah so i wish they showed more of that side of her because she was hilarious like she would throw she really would i mean look, I, I think i said it earlier on before too people could think i think even through the edit i say through the edit because angeli and i were always you know cutting up on the side yeah. uh but I think people could tell, like, I just totally got her energy. And, and this is, and this, here's another question that kind of feeds into this. I'm curious what you'd say. Uh, it's a monster. Johnson says, Krista, you killed it girl and deserve that win. Who do you think should have been in the top two with you? Uh, Raina was great, but I preferred Angelina uh, or An Angelie, sorry, Alexandra and Jessica. And let's just pretend it was a normal cycle. Cause okay. normally we had three girls going into that Go final in. episode. Yeah. Yeah. But there was only you and Raina, and and I loved Raina. I I thought, I, oh, she's stunning, I she was going and to she win worked hard. Like, you I'm did like, really. Winner. Even at the end, you if you watch it, I don't know how. Like I can't remember how they edited, it, but I remember Tyra saying uh, she was waiting on me to respond because I think I looked at the picture and I looked back because I had already convinced decided it was like, Raina. It's Raina, it's definitely not me. I don't care that oh. I won all these challenges and best photos. She's stunning, like it's definitely her. So I looked at the picture and in my mind, because I had it said that it was her, I saw her on the picture and I looked back and then she was like, Krista. And I'm like, oh, it's me. <laughs> like, you know? And the <laughs> and thing is, all there, and Raina, like, oh. yeah, Raina is, I mean, she was stunning. I, I loved her look. All the day. And yeah, yeah, for sure. But now let's just pretend there were three girls going into that last episode. 
Who would you have wanted? I mean, would you would you have liked to still compete against Reina? Because I thought she was a great yeah. opponent Raina, for that final Raina runway. And who would you have wanted to join you guys? Like her photos were stunning. She was never in the bottom two. Like I definitely feel yeah. like you deserved to be there because she was never in the bottom. She was always in at least the top five for her photos. She was stunning. Like you know, so I. Who else would you have wanted with you? Top two. I would, felt like I would have wanted to see Angelie in the top three with us. Me, Angelie, and Reina. Ooh, because that would have been, and actually, this was the first time. So what we I've talked about this before on other Jay's chats. When the girls get eliminated throughout the cycle, even yeah. whether we're in the U.S. or abroad, um, they're not sent home. They're sent to a hotel, and but we always pretend like they're sent home. Yeah. But this was the first cycle ever where we yeah. actually, where no, where we actually played the girls still in the runway because. We see Angelie no, backstage. See yeah, and, and she actually, in the episode, talks about, you know, oh, I'm here, I still get to walk this runway. Yeah. And, you know, you see her walk the runway. So, yeah, this was a cycle where we thought we'd play that moment, which was right. interesting. It was a, another, they were trying to shake everything up this yeah. cycle because I think they were trying to do everything and anything to refresh the show, you know? Ooh, let me give you some pipe and hot tea, though, real quick. This Ooh. is good tea. I think y'all Pipe and hot tea. Let me get my let me get my mug for that one. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Pinkies up. So ooh, okay, face. Okay. Okay, lips. Come on, bring that book. So anyway. <laughs> bring, that book. bring that book. I know those lips. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, and your book's coming. Whoop, there I it was is. waiting. I'm like, it, first of all, Yeah, it did it it, it, it it was supposed to anyway, you it'll arrive real soon. Okay. So the T is, so listen, like people's like, did you guys pick, we didn't pick on Raina. Raina used to do some sneaky stuff, yo. And she, she's smart because she would always do it with no cameras. Mm -hmm. But when oh. the cameras came up, oh, she I was like, hi, heart stars, rainbows, blah, blah, blah. And we'd be like, no, no. But, but there is, so. but that T is, they did catch it on camera once. It is okay. in the show. I don't remember what episode. It's before you guys leave New York but they actually show a little, it's a scene between Brenda, Raina, and you get a little bit of the instigating from her when Angelique comes in. So they did catch it once. Okay, but here's the tea. So, but it's a competition, I get it, but go ahead. But so over thank we filmed during Thanksgiving. So of course, a lot of the people were from New York, the film crew, so they wanted to go home with their families, all that. And this was like, after we filmed the, we're going to New Zealand, we packed our bags up. People don't know, we literally stayed in the apartment still probably like four days before we left, just no cameras, we got to live. And then so we, Thanksgiving came around and these people, you know, people wanted to go home with spend their time with their family. So they put us in a hotel in New York. They all put us, we all had our own room. They took us in one by one from the van to the hotel and with separate rooms, separate floors. We didn't know where nobody was. Of course we had cell phones. So what they said was, you cannot use the phone in the hotel room. You don't call your parents. You don't call nothing. Cause mind you, we we called home once in the apartment and then like once in New Zealand. So we didn't even call home a lot. So once we got in the hotel, we were like, oh, okay, phone. They was like, you cannot call home. If you pick up that phone, if you dial out, you're automatically eliminated. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, so to order food, they sent, we had den mothers, if you guys don't know. They would come yeah. to the phone with a cell phone. We called our mom to say happy Thanksgiving from the cell phone. They go on. They come in. We're, we're ordering you food. What do you want? Blah, blah, blah. They go about the way. Yeah. So we sat in Thanksgiving in our rooms for two days, Thanksgiving the day after, before we even left for New Zealand. So with the thing is, you couldn't dial home. Raina had called her parents on the phone and had been talking to them for days. So we was like, well, we don't understand. Well, why she didn't get eliminated? Because that was, we was abiding mm -hmm. by the rules. Mm -hmm. Wait, if that's the case, we all want to call home because we barely talked to our I know. I didn't, I didn't know about, I didn't know about that Based story. off of their rules, they were like, if you call home, you were eliminated. So we were, when Sister we were Bianca this, we chiming were in. P.O. It, Bianca and Isis are chiming in saying it's yeah it, it it's tragic and and I didn't old. I didn't know about that but by the way the re, that cycle was the cycle we actually got at Thanksgiving because we record for years, years we shot that. on Thanksgiving day and yeah. kept it moving because we worked seven days a week and because it was a staggered we had to stagger crews <laughs> all the way from New York to New Zealand, yeah. we had to fly at different times. This was the yeah. first time we did a break like that in production that was four days down, um, you're right. And people got Thanksgiving for the first time. And yeah, but people don't know that that actually gets 
all kind of like cut yeah. out the show. And that's why they separate you guys because they don't want you guys talking. They didn't want us Crazy. talking. You were on yeah. ice in the hotel. Don't call your parents because you can literally, there's no cameras there. They're, they're not, the phones aren't tapped like they are in an apartment. So they can't listen or hang up if they feel like you're talking too much. So you weren't supposed to call home. Because they will, they will cut you off. They got a hot button. That's true. Because if you guys are talking and you're about they're to like, spill, click, click, <laughs> click they Talk cut that call off. <laughs> Um, so we were upset in New Zealand, no lie. So if it, you know, people are like, oh, you probably feel like, you know, people, I, I saw a lot of comments during the show, like they felt like she got bullied on the end. It's like, no, we were mad. <laughs> yeah. And, and we I, were mad. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because, yeah, I didn't know about her making that phone call. Again, yeah. those are things they never tell us, but it is kind of a little fucked up because yeah, they make a hard rule. If you do it, you'll be eliminated. But the yes. problem is too, you got to think about that threat from producers. If you make that call, you can't you'll be eliminated. How are you going to explain that on TV? Because it's not filmed. It's not so you, filmed. Can't, you can't, explain, you can't it. explain it. So it's really like this threat that doesn't really hold through. It's like, yeah. you know, if a mother threatens a child and says, well, if you do that, you're going to you're going to lose your driving privileges, let's say, if you got keys to the family car. But if you don't follow through with it, it's no, there's no Listen, power. I always tell people, they're like, what is it really like? I'm like, I've never been to prison, but I'm assuming it's something like that. Because <laughs> well, they operate your phone calls. You can't pee. If, like, once elimination and the girl. That's what they're all saying hands. down below. They're like, they're calling it a prison call because it yes, literally is. They're they like, cut it off. Ice, you can't talk. And then they're like, okay, you can eat. Or like when the person is moving out and getting eliminated, we're there too. We're just sitting in the limo for hours while they film it. And it's like, you got to pee? Well, you can't go up and go to the apartment, go to the bathroom. Here's a bottle. <laughs> Ooh, I know. I've heard girls tea. talk that about this bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've heard about that bottle a few times. I'm like, ooh, they definitely yeah, especially the in Ch- the China cycle too. Um, so Semi Chen has this question for you: How much is edited to create drama versus how much drama there actually was? Did you feel like there was drama, or they edited the drama when you watched back the cycle? Because you lived it all. So there is drama, but you guys have to be realistic. It's meant to be that way. That's why you got people in there from 18 to 25. There's people who are high school students. They never left home, so they come in. This is my first time away. I'm ready to turn up. You got people who are moms that come in. I'm a mom at home. I'm coming here. I'm trying to be everybody's mama. You got people who are college students. Mm -hmm. I'm used to partying. I'm coming here. I want to party. So you putting all these personalities in one space. And you don't know each other. You, 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 you don't know anything. So you're just reacting to like, what is happening? Like, so there is drama, but you guys see like two seconds or two minutes of something that probably built up for weeks. Cause again, we filmed seven days a week, sometimes on two to four hours of sleep at best. So yeah, I know. So you get no sleep. Hungry. Remember one time craft services was like, they was changing craft services and food wasn't there. I don't eat hummus to this day because they was feeding us hummus all day. Oh, I remember that. I forgot about that. There was a day, <laughs> they changed companies yeah. because one company, it was on a photo shoot as yep. well. I remember because that was something that production had to do because, you know, we were dealing with the production of the shoot and production came in with craft service. And you're right. One day there was no food. <laughs> It was brutal. Oh my God, I forgot. You know, people are writing down below. They're like, you're not talking about Final Runway. I feel like it's all caps, so they're yelling at me. (laughs) Let's talk Final Runway real quick. It was at a Sui show. It was supposed to be for the first time in top model history because this whole idea of upbeat and smiley because that's what Anna Sui tends to do. I love the circus theme. I came up with that whole circus theme and the kind of- It was cute, but it wasn't for me. I know it wasn't was for you. You said that to like, me at the oh, time. You're like, no. Oh. <laughs> what? I am high fashion. I can't do that. And that was like so Raina. Again, that's why I was like, there's no way I'm winning this. That was so her personality, so her. And it was so out of the, it was just out of my realm. So I was But like, to be fair, though, you yes. did go out. I remember when you had the little bang and the little bob wig. And you went out and you did your little smile and your little, you did it. Like, because... It could have easily gone another way, like, oh, I'm just going to do my fierce walk, and this isn't me. And you yeah. didn't do that. And, um, you know, I, that final runway, I know it was kind of, it's not for everyone, but you got to yeah. realize designers do different vibes. And yeah. Anasui often does really, you know, kind of over these the shows top, over the top with personality. Up. And mm-hmm. and I remember I had to send her a concept because I was yeah. going to do this whole circus theme thing. She loved it because the, yeah. the whole tent and the kind of circus performers, but... Um, yeah, the final runway was, you know, 
it was, I know, I know it wasn't your favorite, but you, you proved that you could be versatile. You know, because, you know, I kept hearing, like, you too, you know, the comments on people, like, she's too old. And I was like, oh, Lord. I'm like, I was 24 at the time, about to turn 25. And I'm like, huh, I'm going to be all bubbly. And, and how can, and by the way, too old oh, now yeah. today doesn't even exist. Look at the model slaying it. Like the mother of them all, like Miss Naomi Campbell, still the slaying mother. the runway at 50. What butter is she using? What is she drinking? Okay, the fountain that exactly. used? Exactly. I just want a sip or two, not much, a sip, one or two. <laughs> Here's a great question for you, uh, Soiree, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Soiree017 says, Krista, were you ever jealous or threatened by Alasia during the competition? You, um, it seemed like you were throwing shade, but it, she never came for you. I didn't feel like you were throwing shade at her. Well, she you? came for me once when we was upstairs. Really? Like, that argument. That was, she came for me and then I just had to like, you know, but I felt like they edited us too to make it more like that, you know. But you know, I, we were two like different, rivals. like two yeah. different. Like she was eighteen, I was twenty-four. Like we didn't have the same personalities. We didn't, you know. But towards the end, I I loved her. Like I loved her. Right. I understood. Like you know, you you come to a realization like we're we're different. We come from different walks mm -hmm. of life. We grew up different. How we see life is different. It's like it's okay. But in the beginning, you just met each other. It's kind of like. Mm -hmm. You just yep, I know. what it I is. Saw, and, my, even, and my girl, June Ambrose, has even tuned in. Like, girl, uh, hey, June. Hey, June, gotta, girl. We, <laughs> can I get a hat? You know, you know people don't hats, know honey. that June actually was so lovely to fly up to Canada and yes. be a part of Canada's Next Top Model, which I hosted. We had a lot of fun. I remember one of my favorite little moments with June was because uh, she came in. She was in this bad Burberry outfit in this hat. And I said, and I thought oh, June Ambrose said, and it's the hat. And I said, yeah. and she's giving us hat. And she went, attack! I remember she was so much fun. Why I remember everything, I don't know, but I love me some <laughs> June Ambrose. Um, here's a great question from the O Juan, I think is how you pronounce it, is yeah. I love the fake photo shoot, which was the fa all fake stuff on Canal Street, if you guys remember. Um, Jay, was that with, who was the most difficult model to direct on that shoot? I love Jessica Angeli and Alasia shots. You know, for me, it was, if I remember, was it Alexandra? Uh, not Alexandra, um, oh gosh. Um, who, do, you, do you remember the shoot that I'm talking about? Yeah, you, you listen, Club, here's T, Club Quarantine D Nice. Shot that. Shot that. What exactly. That's what everyone don't read. Club quarantine D nice. D nice shot that, shot that photo room. shoot. And yes. I think I actually said it. Like I even pit, I, even in my introduction, we cut yeah. to a shot of D nice as a DJ. Yeah. But he's a great photographer because yeah. those shots were amazing, and he's like so amazing to work with. But yes, D nice, who is like yeah, the big yeah. quarantine DJ I right now. It was difficult. Like, I but I don't remember. Again, Angeli loved that shoot. I hated it. I, hated I know because it. it was it because you didn't like things. I remember you didn't like things that were so fashion forward, crate because it was super fashion forward. But not only that, because we'll get on the vampire one too, because you know that was a tragic situation so, for me. But before we go there, so the context thing, <laughs> I, I wasn't into that yet. So you know the ugly pretty thing, the, not the ugly pretty. What was it? The the fake thing. So they put these blue contacts in her eyes, then they did all this makeup and I really, my makeup was totally different from what was shot. But from the time I made it from, we were shooting, didn't we do it in like a firehouse or somewhere they did our makeup? Yeah, and yeah, stuff. yeah. From the time we got there to the trailer on set and you're waiting yeah. to go on, my whole eyes just started to water. All the white makeup that was on had messed up. So if you look, my makeup is slightly different because my makeup had totally come off and Vincent Oquendo, which was amazing, would always Vincent's have to amazing. Yeah. My eyes were just water. He was, and he's quick. Like he fixed it right before mm -hmm. I walked out because I, I listen, my allergies got the best of it and it was over. It was tragic. But. Well, the, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about because you brought up the vampire photo shoot because we're, we're like, I can't even believe this has been an hour. It felt like 15 minutes. But yes. uh, uh, the vampire photo shoot, I remember my, my, my little cheesy intro when I come in as the vampire. Were you all really scared when I came in, though? Did you not no, know I was coming up from behind you? No, but always got to look good when you're doing stuff, even when it's cheesy. Be like, why? I love the, I love the list. The Lestat contact lenses. We look when they did our makeup, because we expect it to look as good as yours, and we be looking at like, wait a minute, this ain't, this ain't that. <laughs> well, I yeah, I had Lestat contact lenses on, but I could actually see, see? Uh, and no eyebrows, and yeah, it was kind of it was it was a bit of a corny entry, but I kind of liked it. It was kind of fun. I get to be like I was the head vampire, and I had 
you know, the guy CJ in the tub, I was supposed, yeah. supposed to be my victim. But um, the interesting thing was that shoot for me, I remember Brenda really freaking out about the contacts and then she we slayed when she got on set. Cause you guys really were blind. You weren't wearing the same contacts as me. They were white out and it was yeah. like black for you. Yeah. Um, so and you, you remember like it didn't show it, but I was the first one to go. So, I so was that's like, the thing the people don't know. Me. The way it's edited is not the order we shoot the it's girls the at all. Was. So I was yeah. the first one. So I was the one you were like, lay down in there, get out. Like, and then everybody else was kind of out and cute. And I was like, I ruined my shoes. I'm like, well, I have to get in it though. <laughs> By the way, can I give a shout out to Emily Gordon? I think I just saw one of her comments go by. I love you and your writing and your husband. And uh, I, I love that you tune into this. Thank you so much. That's like, it means a lot because I, I just love you guys. Um, so there were a couple other really good questions for you and I don't want to like miss them. There was just so many. Um, okay, so this is from you, DeBoss James. It says, Krista, how did you feel personally to be the first person in a and history to win best photo four times in a row. I don't think anyone expected you to slay the end of the competition like that. The top four was there, uh, was anyone's game, but did you feel after a certain point you knew you were going to win? But you just told us you thought Raina had it. No, listen, I, if, if any of the producers on here, like David St. John can tell you, uh, what was his oh, name? Oh, David watches, Bob, uh, yes, Bob, Bob. yeah. Yeah, like, they would tell you and they would always ask me because I it was easy for me. There's like, so who do you think should win? And I can spit out. This is why I think she should win. Why she should win. And they'd be like, what about you? And I'm like, yeah, I got nothing. I had nothing like because I'm like, uh, I feel like I can fall in between the pack. I was like, I wanted to make top five. Didn't think I would. Um, and I felt like Raina was going to win Jessica or Angelique. Those were like my top three that I was like, they're going to win. And then as like the people got eliminated and once Jessica and I was like, okay, it's Raina or isn't Angelina. That, isn't that and interesting? And then once Angelina left and I'm like, okay, it's Raina, you know? <laughs> it's interesting. We, I think it's just psychologically, that's an interesting thing to point out because you were so strong and you're amazing and you're stunning. And I think just in general, we always think it's going to be the next person, not yeah. us. We're our and I, critic. And, we're yeah, our we're our hardest critic. And I, and I know, obviously I've, worked with and had been blessed to work with amazing creative visionaries and celebrities and models. Yeah. And they, I can tell you, they all feel the same way, even though they know they're going for it, they're doing their thing, they're going there. But mm -hmm. there's always sometimes we call it that, that observer voice, yes. that internal critic yes. that's like, oh yeah, but you know, it's gonna be that person. It's oh, gonna, gonna be, be that person. You're already like mentally preparing your mind so that if it yeah. does turn out that way, you're already prepared. Like I was prepared. That's why I was like, Mm. And she was like, Krista, it's you. And but I'm you like, slayed it, you won. And and uh, this this I said you slayed it and you won. And the you de boss James wrote, you got to come back in cycle 15 and walk in the final runway show for Roberto Cavalli. Mm -hmm. How was that? And when you found out that that cycle's winner was would be an Italian Vogue, did you feel that you should have been on that cycle instead? No. Or were you just grateful to be I believe yeah. in divine timing, the universe, the God. Yeah. So I'm like, what was for me was for me. And I'm okay with that. Like, I didn't That's feel amazing. anything about it because what was for me was for me. I won what but was supposed to be You slayed Roberto <laughs> Cavalli's runway show. I remember I, I know was like, my loved girl, he like, loved he you. He really loved you. I ended up you. working with him again. Like, he loved me. Yes, yeah. he was awesome. And and rightly so, because you were amazing. And I'm, and I'm glad that, because so that's a cool experience right there. Yeah. And it shows how even in Top Model, you got to work with a major designer. Yeah. He worked with you again. I think that's that that's super cool. Um, there's so many, well, we already answered this one. Well, I actually asked you, well, here's a different one. So Samantha B337 said, what was your favorite and least favorite photo shoot for both of us? Um, uh, I can tell, I think I said which one was my favorite you know, people are not gonna like what my least favorite photo shoot was that season. You wanna know? What? I didn't love the dancing photo shoot. Uh, listen, okay, <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that one either, but definitely the worst for me was the vampire one. But the dancing one, <laughs> listen. Remember, remember I said so to you, it was like, you look like you had canoes. Yes, but you guys were so hard on me because y'all were like, okay, I had to wear real ballerina shoes. Real ballerina like shoes. shoes. With the wood in it. 
And they were like, jump on this trampoline. Oh, you want me to break a pinky toe? Uh-uh. I'm trying to get this competition. And I was doing those crazy jumps because I was like, I ain't falling on my toe. I ain't breaking an ankle. And then it turned out to just stand by the bar. And I was like, perfect. Yeah. This is more my speed. Yeah. <laughs> like, jump on the trampoline in wood block point shoes. Wood block paint point shoes. Yeah, people, crazy. people, if someone said they didn't like the hair photo shoot, I, yeah, the thing I didn't like about the hair photo shoot, which was not my idea at all, was this idea of, Weaving Steven and Dada and creating these teams and we set the teams Derek up Jay to from yeah, Derek J to purposely heckle like as we split you girls into two teams yeah. and you were it was designed for you guys to heckle each other. Yeah. I don't think we needed that. Personally, I thought that was producers overthinking, trying to that was a moment create, of being like, divisive, create, create drama. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I thought it was distracting from the shoot because yeah. the shoot was already hard enough as it is. I think it was a great shoot because Kate Moss, as we set up, had just done the cover of, you know, V Magazine in With, like all like, hair. Like, the, like, so something, yeah. I don't know. I hate you know, the like, I do thing. believe the producers they do play a role in that too because sometimes you you know when you go to those things and you see somebody talking, they're actually talking to a producer unless we're in. The oh, you mean the interviews? The interviews. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, sometimes I, they come in there and they're like, so what do you think about, because we're mic'd up all day. So if somebody's in another room and we're talking in the room, we don't hear them, but the producers hear everything because we're mic everybody's mic'd up. There's a sound guy. They can turn mm -hmm. everybody up down. So they hear stuff. So sometimes you didn't hear something. They were like, so what do you think about such and such saying this mm -hmm. about you? And you'd be like, yeah, I feel like this about, you know, that. And then you, you, you go back to the location of where the house is. You come to the door, wham. So what mm -hmm. was you saying? Of course. What was it you were saying? Of course. Saying? You of know, course, you know, like, you know that's how it goes. Yeah. It's oh like, my gosh. There, there. I'm just trying to read this next question. There was just this question, because <laughs> we've we, we've already gone over our time, I said, but I want to read this to you. Now y'all got into 1020. I know. I gotta leave to get to my friends. Well, we'll finish. We'll finish with this question, but it's a multi-parter, and you have okay. to try and answer it all. So I'll read them really, really quick. This is from okay. Darren Christopher underscore 1996. One, Krista. What was your strategy when you went into the photo shoots? He has seven questions, so we're gonna do them as like a rapid fire, you answer. Let's go. What was, what, so this is Darren Christopher. What was your strategy when you would go into each photo shoot? I would just pray and say, God, help me through this. I swear, that was it. Okay, second question. What was your biggest competition? In, who was your biggest competition in the house? Raina and Angelique. Okay, three, what did you want, sorry. Who did you want to be in the final two with you? I think you answered that. You said Angelina and Raina, right? Yes. And how did, did you love New Zealand? I love New Zealand. I went back like twice after that and done, uh, did their fashion week there, walked for okay. Nicole Miller a few times. Like, okay. It was fun. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And what was your toughest photo shoot that season? Okay, so definitely you said the blood vampire, being, vampire. In line, being in dipped in blood like it's that was a psyche kind of thing, <laughs> and then was it real blood? I would say the uh, the perfume one. I hated that. Like it was freezing cold, freezing cold, wet, wet. Up, on top of the building. Have you That's felt the hard. wind in the winter blow through those buildings in New York with water? I know with it was water horrible. On your face, crap, and I was in a coat, off, and I was in a coat and a cashmere right, sweater. I was freezing. <laughs> I hated it. I was out of shape. Like. <laughs> and 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 who were who were you the most close to in the house? Angelie. Okay. And who was misunderstood? Who was misunderstood in your season? Like of all the contestants, do you think anyone was misunderstood? Um, I definitely felt like Brenda, Ainsley, mm. Alasia, mm -hmm. and Angelie was understood it was misunderstood. Misunderstood, misunderstood. Yeah. Wow. Misunderstood. This is this is a crazy polarizing cycle. And I got to tell you, obviously, we have another big all star from this cycle, which was Anjali moving into the all star cycle. And there was a question I, I lost it, it came up. But someone did ask, you know, was you know, Anjali eliminated at the end and didn't win because she was supposed to go on to all stars. I want to clarify. There was no talk at the time about mm -hmm. an all-star cycle. Mm -hmm. Because again, right now we were refreshing the you know, top model. The next cycle was Italian Vogue. They were trying to take it back to finding the next top model. Uh -huh. yeah. No one thought about an all-stars. And by the time we got to cycle 17, they were like, 
people want the, the, you know, the fans really want the personalities back. So there was nothing pre-calculated about this at this time about all stars. I want to be very, very, very clear, but um, yeah, it was, the, this was a, it was a very polarizing cycle. It was, it was a lot for me to watch because I did not know how much you guys were fighting on camera kind of in the house and to be honest, behind the scenes, if you really want the tea, we were uh, well behind the scenes. The producers, the t uh, the environment of the show had mm -hmm. shifted so much. No one was happy really we behind was the a scenes. Hot, messy mess. we yeah, people were not happy behind the scenes sometimes. either. No food, no sleep. You couldn't poop regularly. Like it was too much. We were but stressed. I, I'm, a, I'm I'm talking about the producers, talent oh. like us, the judges. We were all not so getting along so much. We couldn't tell. Either. We never noticed it. Never. Mm. Never. Could never feel it. Had no yeah. clue that there was even, we never felt that ever. Yeah. Like I had no clue. I had heard about it after the fact, but I was like, yeah, I never, I didn't see that. You know, everybody yeah. wants their own thing. Like, you know, people always act like, how's tired? And I'm like, I don't know. I only saw her twice and it was like two, three minutes each one. So I don't know. Really Which is crazy. I always feel like, you know, personally, you know, I love seeing you win. I thought you just epitomized what we would look for in terms of your tenacity, how hard you worked, your look, your drive. And, you know, when they talk about all the winners of Top Model, it's like, I feel like, and what about Krista? Like, why are you not being brought up to that conversation? But we, that, you don't even have to answer that because for me, I just think you're just this, this amazing woman. I love that you came on and did this with me today. Um, and I know you got this wedding to go to, so I'm gonna try and get you there on time. I was like, and... I'm about 10 20. I'm, I'm good, you know. Okay. I gotta be a witness to my friend's wedding. I'm excited. Gotcha. And well, we will, we definitely gonna catch up because I know you and I are gonna have to kiki after you because you're gonna get my, the, the copy of my book and then we'll get to and have our little sidebar conversation. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, so tell us real quick is it, is it like, so give it's me a little something, a little. Oh, I can't give a little something. So the, well, my book is coming out on August 3rd. So uh, August 3rd, which is around the corner. Uh, it is a novel, so it is fiction. But, you know, as we say, you know, we write a little bit about what we know. What so you there's, experienced? Yeah, what you know, it, I mean, not verbatim, but you've got to kind of just bring yourself to the table. So uh, it, it'll be coming out August 3rd. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me come in. Let me come in a little closer. You are hilarious. There a character in there that I will identify with. Uh, yes or no? uh, um, I think you have to read it first and then call me. You got my cell, girl. I love you, Arnold. I love you. I'm like, I love you, Arnold. I love it. Thank you guys so much all for tuning in uh, again for the Jay's Chats. We will be back next week again, next Friday at noon. Krista, thanks again so much. I love thanks chatting with you. I can see why so every producer wanted to interview you. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It's so fun. I can't wait to get the book so I can read it and, you know, mm -hmm. see what's what. I'm excited because I'm like, I, I love it's a lot of fun. Honey. I love a good page turner. It's, it's a lot of fun, but there are some good serious themes in there, too. So it's not just all fun and satire. In my we'll mind. See. In my mind, just based off of the little stuff you've released on your on your uh, Instagram, your social media, I'm like, mm. OK, in my mind. And I think I told you. I feel like it's a, a toss between a Devil Wears Prada and a top model situation merging together in a little mashed potato pie. And it, well, it's, not, it's actually Prada. nothing. It's actually nothing like Devil Wears Prada at all. Oh, but but wait. but but the, it is written in a very satirical tone. It yeah. is fun. But I do tackle some really important subjects like you know the abuse of power in the entertainment industry to. Uh, even also, you know, looking at how the entertainment industry deals with intersectionality and black women's identity, which is what we're talking about today. So some really important things with a lot of fun on top, but um, that's I'm for excited. a whole other chat. I'm so excited because you've literally done everything, creative director, makeup artist, like you've oh, done it all. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. And look how so gorgeous you are. Excited. Have a great wedding today. Great day. Thank Stay you. safe. Keep your mask on. Everyone out there. Wear a mask. We're still Please. in this pandemic. Please keep a mask on. Let's Please. protect um, everybody, and we'll get through this. This this COVID Miss Corona needs Miss Corona needs to take a seat. Seriously, she needs I'm to over sit down. Quarantined. Okay. Yeah. Over. 
I know. I'm a social butterfly. I like to fly away. <laughs> All right, I'll see you All soon. Right, Have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.